Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We've pulled together a very knowledgeable team of our trainers that will be walking us through the benefits and use cases for the Rocket IoT 3.0 modules. Real quick before we get started, if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So I'd like to take a moment to thank you all, our law enforcement partners. We appreciate all the work that you do every day. It's our mission at Utility to bring ease and clarity to organizations like yours who are interested in applying swift and efficient technologies to resolve critical challenges. We are proud to be able to help support you in keeping your communities safe. Our lineup of trainers for today's webinars is as follows. We've got a member of our tech support team, our training team, and our inside sales slash customer service team. And with that being said, I'd like to first introduce you to Samson, um, head of technical support. Samson. Thank you, Kristen, and welcome everyone to the Rocket IoT 3.0 webinar. I'm going to start by highlighting some of the features and additions in Rocket IoT version 3.0. In this version, uh, main thing we've done is really revamped the Rocket IoT interface. We updated the laptop and tablet interface to look similar. Because in the past, these two interfaces were uh, slightly different. And I think having similar interfaces for both the laptop and tablet is going to make the user experience seamless when transitioning between the two interfaces. In addition, we also enhanced our LPR interface for our customers that have our automatic license plate readers. This new LPR interface will show a live feed from the LPR cameras, also has an enhanced license plate view and an improved alert feature for tag hits. Another addition in this version is a new OBD interface. In the past, OBD data was only available through AvailWeb. Uh, customers with OBD cables installed will now be able to see live diagnostic data from the tablet and local page interface. We think this is gonna be very benef useful and beneficial for fleet managers because they'll be able to see uh, live diagnostic data and, and look at errors live when troubleshooting uh, a, a fleet, for example. Next slide. Furthermore, uh, we, have an, we have an enhanced media library for our body-worn and in-car video customers. The new media library is very intuitive and users will be able to navigate between different menus easily and will be able to differentiate between body-worn and in-car video because we have added new icons for media types. In the past, uh, you know, uh, when you look at incidents that were recorded, you didn't, you didn't know whether uh, the media was a body-worn media or an in-car media. But with this new enhanced version, you will have an icon that displays um, what is what. This version also has a better searching and sorting capabilities. In addition, we have added the ability to classify and add metadata to multiple incidents at the same time. Uh, the ability to classify multiple incidents is one, of the, is one of the features that most users actually inquired about, and we took their advice and we implemented in this version. Um, it, it really, you know, um, in the past, you didn't have that ability. So officers at the end of the shift, they have to go in and classify uh, one at a time. But with this version now, you can go in and classify multiple videos at once. Um, next slide. We've also added support for a couple of items in this version. Uh, we've added support for our, our new utility camera. This camera provides a button or start and stop and has its own internal uh, and external LED. Uh, this is just an addition to our existing automatic triggers to start recording uh, the button that is. Um, 
this new camera will be available um, starting at the end of the month, uh, if not by next month, beginning of next month. Another item we've added support for is a cube modem. This is an external LTE modem that uh, connects to the Rocket Out TV uh, a USB cable. Uh, the cube connection can be configured in a VelWeb as a primary or secondary connection. So right now we have the embedded SIM, the EM7511 module, uh, and you can also connect a, a wireless access point. But with this cube, you have an option to configure uh, a third connection, right? So you can use it as a backup, a failover. Um, you can make your uh, existing AT&T or Verizon connection as a primary, and then the cube will be your secondary connection, right? Um, the cube modem supports all the major uh, cell providers, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. And if you're in Canada, we also have, uh, I think, Rogers and a couple other providers are over there are supported. The goal is really here is to have an option for uh, a backup, a secondary mode. Uh, slide four. Lastly, we've, we've added a new self-diagnostic feature. This is one of my favorites because it makes uh, life easier for our support team. Uh, with this update, what we've done is really implemented a feature that basically uh, will uh, will cause the rocket to do a self-diagnostic check, right? So when it boots up, it, it's checked to see if all components are up and working function correctly. And uh, if, for whatever reason, if a component uh, has failed, then it goes into a shutdown mode or reboot mode and repairs the connection. Anytime we can, um, implement something like this where a user uh, if we can fix something without a user knowing about it that's 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 a great addition there um, another thing we have I have a screenshot here as you can see um, let's say during in the middle of a shift uh, and a component fails we also have that option where the ride will check we'll do a self-diagnostic and it will prompt the user uh, you know to reboot the rocket out to repair the connection or seek for assistance and, uh, and provide contact information there. That's it for the release notes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Samson. Again, if anyone on the line has any questions, please type them into the questions box of the control panel and we'll get to that at the end of the webinar. Up next is Michael Freeman, training manager at Utility and retired law enforcement master police officer from DeKalb County Police Department, um, where he served 20 years. Uh, Mike, I'm going to let you take it from here. Afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to start off by saying that the features that you're going to be seeing in 3.0 are constantly being worked on. The <clears throat> we want to make sure that we bring the best to our customers, and that being said. We are always asking our customers to, to tell us what you need. We take that information and we develop the newer software. So if you don't tell us that you need something or want something or something isn't working, you got to make sure you tell us. Um, so that being said, if you would, next slide. So for those that use the OBD cables, the interfaces that we have now this uh, particular view is on the MDT or the laptop computer. Um, the interfaces that you see now will actually tell you the water temperature, if it's good, if it's uh, running a little hot, your speed, um, uh, intake error modifies, any error message that you get, the code will display in the information right there. We won't tell you what exactly that code is, but it will produce that code for you so you can tell your um, maintenance personnel. Um, it'll tell you your fuel consumption, um, the heat levels, um, if your engine light's on, if it's not on, if your battery's running low, it'll give you the voltage. Um, we want to make sure that this gives you everything that you need. And of course, you can always run into Avail Web and run that report on the 
uh, OBD cables and stuff and still get that information as a CV, uh, CSV file or whatever. Um, but this way you physically see it while you're in the car, right? Um, next slide. The displays for your um, MDTs. So your displays are a little different. Um, you have two views. Um, as you want to, we want to make it as simple as possible for you. Um, this interface is going to mirror your um, tablet. It's still going to show you the same information. We just try to present it more visible or visual for you. Um, and of course, you can rearrange. We will still give you the information as far as what you're connected to, your network connections, if you're um, holding videos, if it's uploading videos. If your sensors are on, if they're not working, you're able to tell if the door sensors are still working or if they're not working. Um, next slide. This is the tablet interface. As you can see on your right hand or your left hand side is the older view and the newer view is on your right hand side. The rocket inter interface is still there. The storage capacity, your sensors, your LTE, the new view is going to tell you what you're connected to as far as what devices, that's your cameras, your body warns, um, how many people are on that particular riot if you're using SIM cards. Next slide. This is the ALLPR interface. The uh, interface is going to be able to provide the user with the kit, the images of the uh, full video, uh, vehicle, the tag view, what it per, uh, per size or thinks the tag read is so they can verify if that's the correct tag or not. Um, and then of course they have the ability to dismiss it or keep it on file. They have the ability to go back in and see their past hits in the, on the uh, tablet itself. So if they run a tag and then two minutes later they run the same tag, they can see where it was run and the last hit. Next slide. With the 3.0 interface, um, you now have the capability of classifying, adding notes um, all at once, meaning if you have your body-worn camera, your in-car video, instead of classifying one at a time, I can now select both videos and classifying them. Or I can go in there and just see my rocket information, that's my ICVs or in-car videos, or just my body-worn videos. All right. And the next slide, this is an example of how we can classify and add notes to every one of the videos that we have, all by selecting the um, single checkbox or individual box. Okay. Next slide. This error message is allowing us to find out what issues that come up. Um, so if we do our self-diagnostics, just like Samson said earlier, um, we can shut it down, dismiss it, or advise support what we're seeing. And that will be it for those slides. All right, excellent. Thank you, Michael. Um, up next is Vincent Chiera, our Inside Sales and Customer Satisfaction Manager. Go ahead and take it away, Vinny. Thanks, Kristen. We can go to the next slide, please. So in front of you, you should see four modules that are currently presented in the um, utility ecosystem. And we're going to do an overview in this slide of what those modules consist of. So if you have a mixed fleet of devices, let's say you're running Rocket IoT communications but don't have body cameras, or have body cameras but don't have Rocket IoT communications, we're going to take a deeper dive in the subsequent slides to discuss why it's a good idea to pair these devices together because they work together in the, in the same ecosystem. The Rocket IoT Communications core module uh, is really the foundational element in the utility services offering. From the Rocket IoT, both Wi-Fi and GPS communications are handled seamlessly. So think of the Rocket IoT as a, a traffic officer. This traffic officer never takes a break and directs multiple lanes of traffic as required by your staff, never skipping a beat. The Rocket IoT is modular in nature, so part of this modular design 
allows for a high level of interoperability with our body body worn add on module services. So they're really paired for each other, and I'm going to talk about why. Uh, the body worn uh, is the only camera on the market currently integrated with the first responders uniform. So it allows for a secure mount. Uh, it will never you'll never experience a camera being dislodged when you need it the most. And the body camera syncs and links, as shown by Samson in the previous slides, uh, with the Rocket IoT. So they associate with one another. It also serves as the offload point uh, for video stores uh, locally on the body warrant to the Rocket IoT before it's offloaded to the cloud. Uh, the next module below that is the in-car video module. And in-car video expands the offering of your communications, the Rocket Core, that is. Uh, to a front-facing dash camera, a uh, rear camera with infrared, uh, night vision, and audio, and also maintains uh, recording via CJIS compliance standards through the secure Rocket IoT DVR. So this whole system, the first three modules we talked about, they all work seamlessly together. The body camera module also serves as the in-car video microphone and essentially has an unlimited range for picking up audio um, and then syncing that back with the video captured by the in-car video system. So you have multiple streams of information coming in, all into one secure record storage location. And that's all able to be reviewed in the Vail web. The last one on this list is the automated license plate recognition module, and ALPR as we call it. The um, ALPR system we built um, in partnership with Sony uses an artificial intelligence engine and character recognition to pre-populate information simultaneously while comparing to NCIC, NCIS, and state database hot lists. So as you can imagine, this is gonna reduce the strain on the officer or deputy who has these ALPR cameras fitted to their vehicle. They can focus on the task at hand, driving their vehicles, while picking up multiple streams of data uh, in real time. We can move to the next slide. Please. So we'll take a deeper dive into each one of these modules. And for those of you that are currently operating with the Rocket IoT core, uh, I think a lot of this will be um, revisiting kind of an old friend and uh, talking about some highlights. But we do have a newer version, and we're going to talk about that. So some of you may be operating with the Riot X. The Riot X is a tremendous value piece in the utility ecosystem uh, because they're all designed and manufactured here in the United States. Production actually takes place in Tucker, Georgia, not too far from our headquarters in Decatur. Some of the interesting features is that the Rocket IoT is essentially mil-spec. Uh, it has no fans, no moving parts. Um, so it, the body itself is made out of uh, cast aluminum, so it serves as its own heat sink. So this reduces the needs for uh, constant maintenance of you know, fans and, and things of that nature. It's also waterproof. And we've deployed thousands of these rocket IoTs nationwide. Some of them have been in operation for over eight years and still running in the same vehicle strong. So as I stated earlier, the rocket IoT engine is really designed as the base unit for GPS and Wi-Fi communications. With our recent versions coming out, we've added the AT&T FirstNet certification. So if you, you probably know about FirstNet already, but if you don't, FirstNet is kind of a dedicated network for first responders, and it operates on its own band, um, and it essentially has infrastructure built in in the event of a mass casualty event or a critical national event. The Rocket IoT, again, is expandable with other services, as we mentioned earlier. Um, and you can add those services during any part of your agreement with utility. So think about in-car videos, ALPR, body cameras. And we typically issue new software updates every six, six months, if not uh, more frequent than that, as you can see with our new uh, 3.0 launch. So current subscription holders are beneficiaries of the software enhancements that we're making and no additional charge. This uh, modular approach to our design obviously allows us to meet the flexibility requirements of your budgets, and uh, the Rocket IoT is easily adapted um, to expanding departments. So you can 
you have an expanding fleet but you don't have a huge budget, you can start with communications and then a year or two down the road, add in-car video, add body cameras, et cetera. It's all built on the same platform. Next slide, please. So we understand that um, currently there's a shortage of vehicles in the market, new vehicles specifically. Um, and I've seen recent uh, production numbers coming out of Ford and Toyota that are reducing that number even further due to pandemic-related um, availability of workers and components. So I think the, it's, it's ever more important than, than any time really to focus on the diagnostic module because if you can get in front of constantly maintenance and repairs with your current fleet, which may have to go much further than you originally anticipated due to the lack of vehicles, new vehicles in the marketplace, uh, then that's a benefit to you and your department and your staff. So the diagnostic reports in the avail web, um, you know, can monitor things like uh, illuminated check engine lights and uh, will allow your team to adjust preventative maintenance schedules. Um, so if you've got a vehicle driving out there with a stuck thermostat and it's constantly running cool, well, you can audit that. If it's running hot, same, same is true, right? And you can get ahead of a possible engine failure and replace it. All of this is designed to not only help your technicians identify issues with a vehicle, but also to prevent issues from developing further. Again, ultimately, the system is designed to prevent costly and catastrophic failures before they occur. So the Rocket IoT, especially the diagnostic module, this cable can be added to any Rocket IoT that has a vehicle equipped with OBD2. And it's a very small upcharge to get it going. So this is something we can help out with most of our customers. Next slide, please. Taking a deeper dive into body warmth, for those of you who have our system, you understand that it is a secure mount. It is patented um, and no one else can duplicate. We're the only company out there that can integrate a body camera into the uniform. And we've done all types of uniforms. If you're a fire or EMS cut client with us, we are also seeing a, an expanded demand for body cameras for use with uh, field training officers and, uh, and folks in the field that are uh, conducting training for their staff, and especially with the EMS to uh, prevent frivolous litigation. So something to consider as well. It's not just for law enforcement. But our system does offer some unique automation, specifically when it's paired with the Rocket IoT. So things like your vehicle light bar, door switches, gun racks, they're all connected to the Rocket IoT and can initiate body camera and even in-car video recording. BodyWarn also contains uh, its own activation automation feature built in. This includes an accelerometer, our new firearm holster sensor activation, and of course you always have your manual control through a uh, media risk controller. But probably one of the most powerful features of BodyWarn uh, is the officer down feature. And this is a life-saving alert that uh, is issued to all users on that account and avail. Should one of your officers, God forbid, or deputies go prone for an extended period of time, the device will send an alert out uh, to fellow officers to assist. And we've had a few incidences where this has saved lives, so we're very proud of this feature. Lastly, with every body warrant subscription, we offer world-class, 24-7, U.S.-based technical product support and full avail web access, including unlimited video storage with uh, periods of retention based on classification. So all very good stuff. Um, we have some new features coming out related to redaction and so forth that um, we can look forward to uh, in the new year. So we're excited to have another webinar about that down the road, but we can move to the next slide, please. Some of you may know that um, we integrate with CAD systems and we've done just about every one out there. So we encourage y'all to uh, visit with us, discuss what integration means um, and what it can do in terms of time savings for your department. Um, we're one of the few, if not only vendors that can activate cameras uh, based on calls for service. And this means that the, we can associate videos with a uh, call type the case and metadata retention period of classification. Um, and this ultimately can 
return hours of lost productivity uh, per officer or deputy back to their departments. And uh, that's done by no longer having to pull the body camera out and manually enter in, you know, information based on the call. Calls from dispatch will automatically do that. Additionally, any changes made post will also update, right? So if the call type changes based on a, you know, evolving situation, um, as long as CAD is updating that in real time, body camera video footage will also be updated. So as you can imagine, uh, if your officers are out on 10 to 20 calls per day, um, a minute or two saved here and there can return hundreds of hours every year. And ultimately, it's a very small price to pay uh, to guarantee that video is properly classified uh, and retained as required by your department. So move to in-car video. So they say uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, and in my opinion, the more images you can present of a situation, the more data is available to provide an understanding of events as they unfolded. And the greater number of cameras, the greater probability of capturing critical information when it's needed the most. Our recent updates allow for live stream of in-car video. Um, and the beauty of our in-car video system is that it's expandable. So our standard issue um, in-car video system consists of the front-facing camera, as you see here, which we'll talk about in a second, and a rear-facing camera. But we've applied multiple cameras, up to four, in applications such as prisoner transport vehicles, uh, surveillance vehicles, mobile command centers, just to name a few. A tablet video interface, as uh, Samson and, and Michael were discussing and showing, um, also allows you to view and visually interact uh, with the system. If you choose not to go that route, you can always uh, pipe through the local page on your MDT. And our systems are allowed to uh, sync multiple video feeds in playback in Avail Web. So you can see everything in real time as it unfolded from multiple vantage points. And uh, I've personally heard from multiple departments uh, that we've had here at Utility that sometimes that's made the difference between um, you know, exonerating an officer or possibly someone getting in trouble. So we, we always say the more cameras feeds you have, the better. Our new utility camera, front-facing camera that you see here is a utility design camera. So the cameras of old are, are, are gonna be phased out, but this one will allow for manual start-stop and is your green light indicator when it's recording. So multiple redundant features letting you know that recording is actually taking place. And as always, all these videos um, go into our Avail web engine um, with the chain of custody and uh, appropriate management features. Next slide, please. Okay, so making our way to the last module, um, automated license plate recognition. So our ALPR um, service module allows for officers and deputies to collect hundreds of vehicle tags every day. We currently have deployed with a few local agencies um, during early testing, and we've heard of 150 to 200 vehicle tag reads out of one car, which is unbelievable. Um, again, we said utility will pull your um, local database data or NCIC on a daily basis and cross match it to hits of vehicles in the field. So again, this is all performed in real time with very little uh, interaction required of the driver or end user. And then uh, this of course increases focus and driver safety, which we know are initiatives with every agency. ALPR system works um, on a list of vehicles as it's compiled on a daily basis. And those hits are reviewable, um, along with all the metadata associated with that hit, where, when, and so forth. So ALPR allows for viewing after the fact and provides uh, registration status, vehicle make, model, color, and year. Again, we can pipe in just about as much data as, as we can receive from your, for your database. So insurance information and so forth can also be populated. 
again, the system builds upon the Rocket IoT core and comes with a graphics processor. So you got to have the rocket. So if you have a communications unit, you can you can put ALPR in right away. If you have an in-car video with communications, you can put ALPR in right away. If you don't have one of those, got to get the communications unit as the base, and the ALPR unit will plug into that. Again, systems are designed to be modular and built on over time. Next slide, please. So this gives you an example of the different modules as they're configured, but there's no one size fits all. And we understand that there's different budgets and needs for departments, and they vary wildly. Um, what we can provide is a level of confidence at, in terms of the thousands of vehicle types we've installed in for the thousands of vehicles and the, and the dozens of types we've installed in um, across multiple agencies in the nation. These include uh, in-car video systems with fire engines, uh, police cruisers, bearcats, motorcycles, mobile command centers, snowmobiles, we've had a few of those, and ambulances, just to name a few. Um, but we've installed in, in many more. We've, we have some uh, helicopter and boat applications as well that we've applied. So we encourage you to discuss your plans for fleet expansion uh, with our team. And our sales staff will build a custom plan to payment schedule that I think is right for each department. Next slide, please. So the last thing I think um, is an important topic to um, visit because as excited as many departments are with all our advancements, they usually hit a brick wall when it comes to procurement, right? It's a, more often than not, it's a very lengthy and painful process. And we understand that sometimes these opportunities can take six to nine to 10 months to mature before the product is in hand. And uh, utility has been actively working with purchasing cooperatives around the country that are nationally recognized to help speed up this process. And typically it allows you to bypass the RFP process. Um, I did some research that you, you all, the folks on this phone will probably appreciate, but the average RFP in the United States uh, takes about eight weeks to, to post and close, not to mention all the time it takes to compile the data, build it, and submit it for bid. Um, it costs hundreds of hours on average and, and can take anywhere from 100 to 200 pages of legal documentation to uh, facilitate a purchase. So we've successfully um, bypassed a lot of that process to help our customers get product and services in hand much faster than, than that six to eight plus week, you know, and, and painful paperwork process. So listed are a few of the um, nationally recognized purchasing cooperatives that we currently have awards on. And I've sorted them in the order of what we've seen um, has, is the order of reception, right? Like, where is it recognized based on your, your procurement folks? So with the first one being NASPO. Um, NASPO is a nationally recognized purchase and cooperative. It's pre-bid. It's an RFP award that's recognized by most states. Uh, the second to that is Sourcewell, formerly NJPA. Sourcewell is a new award, but it's rapidly growing, and it requires much less paperwork than NASPO to get going. And you'll probably be surprised to find out you already have a membership ID through some other city entity making a purchase through that cooperative. So that facilitates the speed at which we can um, get you uh, your products going. Uh, Byboard is usually recognized in the state of Texas, but it's also recognized in 25 other states. And then if you're in the, the great state of North Carolina or South Carolina, we have specific state awards uh, for, those, for those two states. And then uh, North Carolina gets a double whammy with the North Carolina Sheriff's Association, which is also nationally recognized um, and is uh, coming up for renewal in the next couple of months. And we have many more. We have uh, Houston Galveston, uh, HGAC, and uh, many more. So we encourage you all to Send us an email on uh, what modules you'd be interested in adding or initiating with the uh, utility uh, to insidesales.utility.com and we'll get somebody to uh, give you a brief uh, discussion demonstration and uh, send you a, a pricing estimate on one of these cooperatives. So we thank you all for your time and uh, I'll turn it back over to Kristen. Thanks. Thank you, Vinny. That was very informational. 
Um, that sums up the content portion of our webinar. And so we've had several questions come in and we're gonna go ahead and, and take these um, this last portion of, of our hour time slot here to start answering some of those questions. So the first question that I have, will we be able to customize the self-diagnostic error message contact information? Micro Sampson, are you able to answer that one? Yeah, yeah. so no, currently no, right? Right now, what you have is really live diagnostic information. There's no customization currently, but this is something that we can uh, put an enhancement ticket for. Okay, next question. Will the older Square-based tablet interface still be supported? Uh, no, so if, if you're referring to that uh, rugged uh, older model, we had a gray one and a yellow one, uh, Android tablet, no, it's not gonna be supported with this version. So we do have the new Samsung uh, rugged tablet uh, that is still that's obviously the production tablet that's the one we support currently so if you still have the really old rugged one uh, it's time to upgrade thank you samson i've got another question here does the new media library features do the new media library features apply to the rocket iotx media library and not the body worn slash avail Yes, it refers back to the IoT. Um, the avail program is still the same. You'll still have the classifications and everything as well. Um, in reference to classifying multiple videos at one time, it's just the um, IoT, the uh, tablet, and the rocket interface at this point. And only for the rocket IoT XM model, not for the X model. All right, thank you guys. Our next question, um, it says, it sounded like the users are able to rearrange the layout on the tablet. Is that something they can be locked out of? And is there a way to push a common layout to the tablets? The There's just two interfaces or two different versions. You have two... Uh, layers that you can choose from you can't go in there and deselect the sensors and stuff like that and it's a user base so if an agency has a large list of video categories is there a way to mark specific selections as a favorite so that users can have those appear at the top of the list for easy selection um we can't specifically choose favorites. Um, what we can do in a Bell Web is select and change the array uh, orientation. So if you want like traffic stops at top, you can move that traffic stop from its current location to the very top. So that's the first thing they see in the, in the order. So just rearranging the order is all you can do at this moment. A Bell Web also has the ability to flag an incident. So if you have some favorites that you want to flag, there's a tab in the well where you can find all your favorites so if you tag them as uh, or flag them then you'll be able to go to the flag portion of the avail web and be able to see all the favorites all right thank you when will this update be a well sorry when will this update be available to existing customers will this work on all devices such as the tablets the rocket iot x or the xle This update is currently available for all customers that have Rocket IoT X Elite. Um, we currently don't have an update for the X, the Rocket IoT X. Uh, so if you do have the Rocket IoT X Elite, we can deploy it. We haven't deployed it yet. What is the process to submit a suggestion or an enhancement? So usually the best way to do that would be is to really send an email to support at utility.com and our support guys will uh, put in a ticket and provide you with the ticket number. And the process is really, we, after they submit that engineering will review those requests and if they get approved, uh, 
will they'll be implemented into, into the next release. All right, next question. Will the new camera push button be treated like a trigger in a veil and can we disable it? Yeah, so that is going to be a uh, yeah, push trigger. So we're, just, we're going to have a, a, some kind of naming convention for it for how it's going to, it could be push start, camera start, whatever it is. Yeah, it's going to display that in a veil web. Um, I'm not sure if we can disable it yet. That's something that we're still uh, talking about. So that hasn't been implemented yet. So we don't know if we're going to implement that yet. But right now, the answer is no. But uh, we could potentially do that as well. Okay, next question. What is the downside of not upgrading? What specifically did they ask for? Um, just to rock it out of T3.0? Well, yes, uh, I believe that's what this is asking about. What's the downside if we don't upgrade to 3.0? Yeah, I think, I mean, the one of the things we've added is a self-diagnostic feature that checks components. So, uh, and self-repair feature we have in there would be very beneficial for anybody because if you run into any issues, you, you know, you're going to uh, have to call contact support for somebody to remote in and resolve this issue. But with this version, some of these components can be automatically resolved because the ride will actually repair the, the whatever component failed. Also, uh, you do have that option with the pop-up message where you can uh, reboot to repair your connection. So you minimize your downtime in the event that you have some issues. I think that would be one of the biggest benefits. In addition, if you have diagnostics, I mean, it's great to have that live diagnostic data. I mean, uh, especially for fleet guys, that would be very useful information to have. All right, the next question, are there any updates coming anytime soon for Avail Web? Yeah, we do have an update coming out soon by, uh, hopefully by the end of November, uh, we're gonna have a new uh, revamped uh, uh, redaction software. We're updating our redaction software that's gonna be included in that release. Um, so that's, that's coming out soon. Anybody else have any other questions? If so, go ahead and add them to the, to the questions panel. I'm gonna give you guys just another moment here. We did have a couple of questions about um, some issues with the body worn camera. Um, those questions we will be able to answer outside of the webinar. Let's see. Are there any plans for pushing 3.0 to Rocket X? or Rocket IoT X, or will it only be supported on XLE? So currently it's uh, only supported on XLE, but um, there may be plans to deploy this version to Access. Um, uh, I don't have ETA on it. Uh, I think software team have talked about that, but I don't have any ETA on that. So I can't say when it's going to be deployed. I think it's probably going to happen, but I don't know. I'm not sure exactly when. All right. Thank you, Samson. Well, um, that about wraps it up um, for today's webinar. We will be sending everybody a digital version of the webinar tomorrow. Um, so thank you for joining us and attending today and asking the questions that you did. Um, we will also have a short survey when you sign off. So if you don't mind just filling that out for us so we can just collect a little bit more information from you. Again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to any of the teams that have been on here today. So um, marketing at utility.com helped put this whole thing together, but you can also reach out to support